Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we go about multiplying algebraic fractions. But before we start, just want to return back to a numerical example. 2 thirds times 4 fifths. Now we should be familiar with what we do with something like this. We just multiply the numerators together and divide it by the denominators multiplied together. So we've got 2 times 4, which is 8. And this is divided then by 3 times 5, which is 15, 8 fifteenths. So from this, it follows then that if we were doing the same thing, but only algebraically, suppose we had the fraction, say, A over B, and we multiplied it with another fraction, say, C over D. And it doesn't have to be restricted to two fractions being multiplied together. It could be another one, as many as you like. Let's say we've got E divided by F. Then what happens is that we multiply all the numerators together. In this example, we get A times C times E, which is ACE for short. And this is divided then by B times D times F, BDF. So this is the basic principle then when it comes to multiplying fractions together. Now I've got some examples that we're going to work through and at any point you might feel that you want to pause the video and have a go. But first of all, let's just take a basic example. Let's suppose we have, say, a squared divided by b as one fraction, and we're multiplying it, say, with the fraction b cubed divided by a to the power 5. Now, according to this rule here, all we need to do then is just multiply a squared with b cubed, and that gives us a squared b cubed, and then divide it all by b times a to the power 5. I'm going to put the a to the power 5 first. Not that you have to, but uh, just think it looks better that way. Now, what we can do with this, though, is simplify it. We've got one term on the top and one term on the bottom. The term on the top consists of several factors, a times a times b times b times b. And the denominator is a to the power 5, which is a times a times a times a times a times the b then. And so we can cancel out common factors. So I could cancel out a squared, for instance. a squared into a squared goes once, and a squared into a to the power 5 goes a to the power 3 times, a cubed then. Same with the b's. I could cancel through by b. b into b goes once, and b into b cubed goes b squared. I could write b squared, or I could just cancel out the 3 and write a 2 there. It's up to you. So this simplifies then to 1 times b squared, which is b squared, and then that's divided by a cubed times 1, which is a cubed. So we get b squared over a cubed. Now you notice I've written an equal sign here. You can do that, but I would encourage you when you're working with this type of thing, with algebraic fractions, to write an identical sign, that it's identical to this expression here, and the same applies there. Now, it's not the only way that we could set this out, really, okay? This is the way that I would normally do a similar sum. a squared divided by b then multiplied by b cubed over a to the power 5. Notice how I just multiplied the top and then the bottoms together in this version. You'll find that quite a lot of people will do the cancelling, if possible, at this stage here. So for instance, I would notice that a squared here cancels into itself once, and it goes into a to the power 5 then, a cubed times. And similarly, the b cancels once in here, and it goes into this b squared times. So what I get back then is 1 times b squared, which is b squared, all divided by 1 times a cubed, which is a cubed. So you can either cancel in the sum, or just multiply the tops and the bottoms, and then cancel afterwards. I think this, though, tends to be a lot easier to work with. 
Remember, you can only cancel any value on the top with any value on the bottom. You cannot cancel on the same line. Now, I've got an example here, or two examples actually, which I would encourage you to try. They're a little bit more complicated than the one that we did here, but yet the principles are the same. With this first one, we've got x squared minus 9 divided by 6x cubed being multiplied by 6x squared minus 3x divided by 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 and then multiplied with x minus 3. So I've got three fractions, if you like, being multiplied together. We can think of x minus 3 as x minus 3 over 1. It's up to you whether you put that over 1 or not. Now with this one, what we've got is several terms in the tops of the fractions. For instance, we've got two terms here, x squared minus 9. Uh, on this fraction, we've got two terms on the top. In the denominator of this fraction, we've got three terms in the denominator there. So we cannot go about cancelling at the moment. There are no common factors. So when you get something like this, what we do is we try and factorise it. So I'm going to say this is identical to and for x squared minus 9, this factorises. It's the difference of two squares. You should be familiar with that. It's x minus 3 times x plus 3, or x plus 3 times x minus 3. doesn't matter which way round we do it. For the 6x cubed, well, that's one term at the moment made up of the factors 6 and x cubed. So we've got 6 times x cubed. And then we're multiplying that with 6x squared minus 3x. Now there's two terms here, and these two terms factorise. They share a common factor of 3x. So I would factorise that as 3x, and then you're going to need another 2x to give 6x squared, and then minus 1 to give minus 3x. Okay, And then this is divided by 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. And this too factorises. It's a couple of brackets that we have. And we're going to have a 2x and an x at the front to give us the 2x squared. And for minus 3, two things that multiply together to give minus 3, it's going to be minus 1 and plus 3. And if I put minus 1 there and plus 3 there, that way round, you can see that we get 6x when you multiply 2x with 3, and minus 1 times x is minus x, so 6x minus x is the 5x. Now we've got to multiply it with the x minus 3, so just leave that as x minus 3 there. And as I say, you can put this over 1 if you want, okay? It's up to you. I'll put it over 1 anyway, okay? There we go. Now we've got one term in the numerators and the denominators, okay? So we're looking for common factors now that we can cancel out. So I notice, for instance, that I've got a 2x minus 1 here and a 2x minus 1 here in the same fraction, so they can cancel. I also notice that I've got x plus 3 over here on the top line, and I've got an x plus 3 down here, so they can cancel. These two x minus 3s here, though, they can't cancel because they're on the same line. I can also notice that this x, for instance, can cancel. So if we do this in blue, I can cancel x into x goes once, and x into x cubed goes x squared. So just put x squared there. And also, the 3 and the 6 cancel. I can see that 3 into 3 goes once, and 3 into 6 goes 2. There's no more cancelling then. So we can finish this off. This is going to be identical then to x minus 3 times 1, times 1, times 1, times 1. So that's still x minus 3, times another x minus 3. So it's going to be x minus 3 all squared. And on the denominator we've got 2 times x squared, that's 2x squared, times 1 times 1 times 1. So it's just going to be 2x squared. And there you have it. 
Now, for the next one, you've got to do much the same as what we did up here. So you might like to pause the video at this stage and try this one. I'll just give you a moment to do that. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So with this one, we need to factorise the numerators and the denominators. So with x squared minus x minus 2, hopefully you got two brackets there where we've got an x and an x. And for minus 2, that's going to be minus 2 and plus 1. And if you expand this, you get the 1x and the minus 2x, giving you the minus x there. This is divided then by x squared plus 2x plus 1. And again, this factorises x and an x. And then you've got plus 1 in each one of those. And if you multiply that out, it will give you x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then we've got to multiply this then with x squared minus 16, which factorises. It's the difference of two squares, so it's going to be x minus 4 times x plus 4. And in the denominator, x squared minus 6x plus 8, that factorises 2 to two brackets. And in that, you're going to have an x and an x. And for plus 8, you're going to have minus 4 and minus 2. Minus 4 and minus 2. And that checks out as well to give you that minus 6x there. So we're looking for common factors again. And I can see that we've got an x plus 1 here, which will cancel out with that x plus 1 there. What else have we got? We've got x minus 4 here on the top, can cancel out with an x minus 4 there. And the x minus 2s, they're on different levels, so we can cancel those out. So x minus 2 into x minus 2 goes once, and it goes once into that. And so we're just left with 1 times 1 times 1 times x plus 4. So that's going to be then identical to x plus 4. And that is all divided by 1 times x plus 1 times 1 times 1, which is just x plus 1. And you don't have to put this in brackets, OK? It's up to you. You can put brackets, if you like, round x plus 4 and x plus 1. But the division line acts as dividing each of x plus 4 and the x plus 1. So hopefully you've been able to follow what I've been doing and this should set you up for any similar examples like these.